Here we have example two for classifying critical points. Let y of t equal negative t cubed plus 75t. Find all the stationary points, aka critical points, and classify them. So step one, we're going to determine the first derivative. This time it's going to be y prime of t. It's going to be equal to the derivative of negative t cubed is negative 3 t squared, plus the derivative of 75 t is 75. So step one is done. Step two, I'm going to set the first derivative to be equal to zero and solve for the associated x values, in this case, t values. So I'm going to set this to be equal to zero, and I'm going to solve for this. I'm going to move 3t squared to the other side. So I have 75 is equal to 3t squared, dividing both sides by 3. I get 25 is equal to t squared. So t is going to be the square root of 25. T is going to be equal to positive, positive square root of 25, so positive 5, or negative 5. So now step 2 is done. I've solved for the horizontal axis values, the t values. Next, I'm going to determine the vertical value, our y values, for these t values, for these critical t values. So I'm going to take my original equation and I'm going to substitute my t values into that equation. So I get y when it's positive 5 for my t value is going to be equal to negative 5 cubed plus 75 times 5. And that's going to give me 250. Now I'm going to substitute my other critical t value, negative 5, into the equation. So I get negative times negative 5 cubed plus 75 times negative 5. And this is going to give me negative 250. So now I have my two coordinates, my two critical coordinates. One is going to be positive 5, comma 250, and the other one is going to be negative 5, comma, negative 250. Those are the coordinates. Step 3 is done. And we have found our stationary points, those critical points. Now we're going to classify them. So now comes the process of classifying whether they're a min, a max, or a saddle point. So to do that, I'm going to first determine the second derivative. So y double prime of t is going to be equal to the derivative of my first derivative equation. So the derivative of negative 3t squared becomes negative 6t, and the derivative of 75 is 0. So now I have determined the second derivative. Now I can do the second derivative test. This is where I calculate the second derivative for our critical t values or horizontal values. So first I'm going to take my critical value of positive 5 and I'm going to substitute that into this equation. So y double prime when t is equal to positive 5 is going to be equal to negative 6 times positive 5. That's going to give me negative 30. And then I'm going to do the same thing but for my negative 5 coordinate. So I'm going to take this negative 5 coordinate and substitute it into my equation. So I get y double prime of negative 5 is equal to negative 6 times negative 5. This is going to give me positive 30. So let's use these second derivative values to classify these critical points. For t is equal to positive 5, our second derivative is negative. It's a negative value, meaning we're dealing with concave down and this critical point here is at a maximum. And when y is equal to negative 5, our second derivative is positive. So now we're dealing with concave up. So where the slope was 0 right over here, that would be a minimum. So now we have defined our critical points 
based on the second derivative test. Step five is done. Because step five was conclusive, we don't need to do step six. We can ignore this step. We have found and classified our critical points. The first is 5, 250, which is a maximum. And the second is negative 5, negative 250, which is a minimum. Now we don't know if these are the overall maximum and minimums, so we should write down that these are local maximums and local minimums to be more accurate. And when we examine the graph, we can indeed see that our local minimum was right here at negative 5 to negative 250, and our local maximum was right here at positive 5 to 50. So now we have the capabilities of determining where local mins and local maxes are without even graphing them to begin with. Let's do one more example where step five is going to give us a second derivative test that's inconclusive.